I'm the band leader for Diane and the Deductibles, the producer of the Daria Productions uh, Rock and Blues Concert Series here in Huntington Beach. My name is Sugar Ray Rayford. I don't do concerts, I like to do a party because I want people to have a good time and enjoy themselves at least as much of a good time as I'm having. It was nice seeing people uh, get up and dance and just look like they're enjoying themselves. I know we're in this real nice establishment. But this is not jazz, all right? Ain't no red wine and cheese in this joint tonight. Tonight is malt liquor and fried chicken, man. We gonna get butt naked and let it all hang out. I don't want you to be scared. Don't want you to be scared. Tonight's all about big legged, big booty women. Well, that's the way I'm talking. Tonight we played here at the Huntington Beach Library Theater with uh, Sugar Ray Rayford Band. I think the crowd had a really good time and we just went nuts tonight. We play with this band, every night is an experience. We got the audience involved to see them enjoy themselves, jump up and down and have a good time and dance in the aisles. That's a pretty good feel. When that woman walking down the street, baby, she rocks like an old mission Boy, did the people really get their money's worth tonight. It was like Mardi Gras. He's throwing beads out to everybody. Uh, it was great. It was a good show. It was a great show. <laughs> He's a really different entertainer. He doesn't just play his songs. You know, he doesn't let you just sit there. He engages. Everybody was on their feet tonight. The best performers can always make you as an audience member feel whatever the hell he wants you to feel. He has that kind of gigantic personality and charisma to woo over any audience. I've seen him take an audience that wasn't feeling anything and change their lives for a couple hours. People have come to have a good time. They spent their money to have a good time. I've always figured that my job is to help people, allow people to forget their problems that are at home. So I have really pushed myself to be more in tune with the audience at all times. And I can feel that the, the energy that they want to get up, they want to move. Sometimes I think they're just waiting for permission to do so. And then once they get up and dance and other people see them dancing and they're up and dancing, they're like, oh, you know, this is different. Okay, it's cool, you know. And before you know it, they're rolling. There's that undefinable, unquantifiable quality of it, and whatever it is, Sugar Ray has it in abundance. Sugar Ray, what he has is definitely God-given. You don't have that kind of thing unless you were born with it. He gave him the voice, he gave him the ability to dance, the determination and the drive. It's very magnetic to the band as well as the audience.
he's able to grasp the audience's attention and hold it and get them involved in what we're doing. Sugar Ray just, he had some moves that surprised me. Boy, does his hips, his hips, <laughs> <the legs. laughs> I wasn't watching that close. Oh my God, he, <laughs> he was shaking that thing. I'm, all the girls were like going, whoa, baby. Part of the trick of, of having a good band is picking the right musicians and then just letting them play. If you choose well, this is the result. For the price of love I lost, I'm only getting myself to blame. If I live to love again, I'll do it different next time. If I live to love again, It's kind of a road map, and the destination is the song. Now, how you get there is pretty much up to you, and that's what's great about this band. We don't do things the same way twice. It's constantly changing and evolving, and I, I get, otherwise I'll go nuts. I heard Louis C.K. say it best. He said, jokes are like fruit. Once you nail them, once you get it perfect, it, it's like fruit. It starts to rot, so you get rid of it. As soon as I learn something and I feel like I nail it, and I'm in the groove, and I'm, I, I feel like I'm, I'm happy with it, I change it, because it starts to get old and gross. So that's my style, is constant progression. When you want it, I'm a good time, There's a rock element, there's a funk element, a jazz element. We use it all. And Lavelle had a very nice drum solo on his feature tonight. It was quite yes. exciting. Mr. Lavelle Jones on the drums, ladies and gentlemen. Hey! Uh, when we start, we hit the first note already. We are kind of pumping, you know, we are moving. We're grooving. And then once the audience, once we catch their eye and they get into it, oh, it's gone. You know, it's gone. It's, it's fun time. Oh. brought the two guitar players out with acoustic guitar and without any mics no or mics. anything. He did a couple of tunes and sang the blues and you got to respect him for to be able to do that for a room full of people. He just held everybody. It was great. Bear the muscle, guys, y'all. 
kind of material it comes off best the way it's supposed to be heard and it's not necessarily supposed to be heard through a big sound system or this is more like sitting on the back porch that's the essence of the blues to begin with blues is a roots music it all started with uh, in the back porch of mississippi anytime a band can take an audience on a musical journey then you definitely have done what you're supposed to do what you're actually doing is teaching the audience a little bit about the heritage of the blues and the audience gets a chance to not only hear that sound they get a chance to actually listen to the lyrics it gets down to make you love you baby say not so fast to get you where you go Break it down, and you start doing an acoustic. You get about halfway through that song, and people are quiet and they're paying attention, and it just draws them in. With a facility like this, that's purpose built for these kinds of performances, really. I mean, it is a theater, and his voice does carry so well. With this facility, it was a perfect match. And I know I'll be right with just a little more time. Y'all dig that? Diane and the Deductibles uh, do some of the songs that I've played with them. It was really cool uh, to, to watch it from the outside because they're such a fun band. They're a really good band and they're really great people. And that part of it for me was definitely a highlight, being able to see them do their thing and hear their new music, which was just excellent. I really, truly enjoyed their show. <laughs> this beautiful, melodic, and powerful voice, and she has a great band. There are some great musicians who obviously have played and understand what's going on and understand how to back up a singer. And they've done a great job. It sounded really good. The band is getting tighter. We've been rehearsing and yeah. putting new songs together. And Hold on. Hold on. Hold on is the new song. I think we did a pretty good job of it yeah, tonight. Yeah, it's got a lot of dynamics. Mm, yeah, that's and, what I like about uh, it. developing as a band and developing material that that we all sort of fit our personalities into which is that's kind of what you want i think
everything's so mutual. We really respect each other. We respect each other, and we're, we're friends. And too. we're friends, and we enjoy each other's company. And yeah. it's a lot of fun. And our goal is because we play here every other month. Is every time we come back, we have a new song, a new original. We always try and do a brand new song for every show. Developing a sound for our band is is I think the most exciting thing. It really is kind of a little more progressive. It's a there's a little storytelling in it. You won't get too far unless you break this chain. Library Theater. It's a beautiful venue. Every time I play here, it just sounds great. You don't want to get off of that stage because it's so pure and live sounding. It's a great venue. There's not a lot like this in this area. To walk in, it's a beautiful venue, and I would never have thought that this venue was connected to a library, but it's beautiful. It's beautifully laid out. It's gorgeous, and I think they've done a great job at procuring it for live music. Diane has done a great job, her and Cliff, of bringing in the sound crew that definitely understands frequency, area, space. These guys were excellent tonight. All audiences usually really do dig being able to connect with their entertainment on a closer level. There's no nosebleed seats in here. Everything's right at us, and that's the way you want it. nice to invite people here because they, they enjoy it and it's, uh, it's a really cool place to be. Yeah, it's a good place to And they want to come to. back. If they've never been here, they're like, oh, I want to come back. Huh? The way it's built, the, the theater, the back seat is 50 feet from the stage, so it's built at an angle. So everybody has a great seat. Those people that were here, I think, will pass the word on. It's a great time for everybody. And what she's trying to do is, is good. This is a nice venue. She knows what she's doing and the band that she plays with sounds great. I think the people uh, love it. From what I could see, the place was full and they loved it. So something's working. I think it's great for the community. As a producer of a concert series, it's very challenging to find the artists. And I always like to go see somebody just to get that feeling for them. If they can get it across, then I get real excited and want them to play a show. Next one will be Ambrosia. And then October, we have the Babies. Ambrosia and the Babies, they're two kind of older bands that had so many hits. Bringing uh, Ambrosia to Huntington Beach should be a good thing, right here at the Huntington Beach Library Theater. People enjoy coming here. I do. Good music, good food, good drinks. Yeah, it's all around good. We have about five concerts a year. We gear it towards more original music, bringing really great music to the community of Huntington Beach. Thank you. 